Hi everyone, welcome to my Facebook Live this week. My name's Mandy with a B from Mandy's Papercraft Creations and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Sydney, Australia. Welcome, it is great to be back with you all this week. I missed last week, um, but it is great to be back this week. So, um, as you're jumping on, say hi. I love to be joined um, by people. It makes it so much more fun when we are creating together rather than me just creating on my own. <laughs> hey, Tina. I'm great, thank you. How are you? It's great to have you along today. So while everyone is jumping on, hey, Glenda, how are you going? Great to have you today. All right, while everyone's jumping on, I'll quickly bring this up on my iPad so that I can view all of your comments there. And let me just turn my volume down because we don't need me in stereo. <laughs> hey, Megan, how are you going? Great to have you here today. Okay, let me just find my live. There we go. Fantastic. Good, good, good. So we're just waiting for a few people to jump on. I have a little special guest that's going to join us in a few moments. But, um, oh, thank you. Thanks, Tina. And glad to hear that you are doing well. That's really good. So I know, I think last time I spoke to you, you hadn't been very well. So I'm glad to hear that you're doing better. So that's awesome. So sorry, I'm just a couple of minutes late today. Um, it's, we have a bit of a distraction in the household at the moment. So um, yes, I was, I've was. i had plenty of time to be, get prepared, but um, keep on having little um, moments of focus shift. <laughs> You'll understand why in a moment. <laughs> oh, Megan said it's very hot up there today. Is it Megan? Wow, okay. It's actually quite warm down here today too. I stepped outside to hang some washing on the line earlier and thought, whoa, it's hotter than I was expecting. I didn't actually look at the weather this morning. Usually every morning I check the weather to see what the temperature is going to be, but I um, didn't do that today. Hi, Tina Marie. Great to have you here today. Um, yeah, so we've got a few jumping on and Anita's here as well. Hi, Anita. Great to have you. And Sue's here and we've got Megan and Tina and Tina Marie, Megan and Glenda said Megan. Megan, I said you twice. <laughs> um, yeah, so how has everyone been since I've been away? Um, some of you who follow me may know and some who might just be popping on may not know. Um, we lost uh, John's dad a couple of weeks ago. And so I took a little bit of downtime just um, to process that and to help to organize the funeral and things like that. So um, last Friday was his funeral. Um, we gave him a beautiful send off. So, um, so that was really lovely, as sad as it is, um, but it was really beautiful service. So, uh, so that was really good. Um, the family are all going quite well, um, coping a lot better than I expected actually. So that's been good. Um, but yeah, he had been sick for quite some time and um, he was quite elderly. He was 89 years old. So, um, and he'd had a lot of um, health issues for probably, must be around 10 years now, about eight, eight to 10 years now. He's had one health issue after the other, after the other, and he's been very, very ill. So um, yeah, he hung in there till he was 89. Um, which was amazing considering all the health problems that he'd had and we thought with, that we might lose him a while ago um, but he was pretty tough so yeah but we're just thankful that he's not suffering anymore um, yeah but the family's all doing well and we have a little positive focus which is helping um, our family here at home especially um, in that we got a new puppy on Saturday. So you may have seen the photos already on my profile, on my business page. And if you follow, if you're um, friends with me on Facebook as well, I posted photos of little Callie then. Um, but she's gonna join us shortly so that you can all see her. She's absolutely adorable. Um, so yeah, 
Okay, so who, hang on, let me see who else we've got here that I haven't said hello to. Kathleen's here. Hi, Kathleen. Great to have you. And Amanda's here. Hi, Amanda. Um, oh, you've missed my videos, Kathleen. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I think I was only, was I, I think I was only away one week. I think I only took one week off, I think. Or was it two? I don't know. I've lost track. Yeah, but I am out of the rhythm of things actually. So forgive me if I'm a little bit all over the place today. So who's ready to meet our little special guest? She's waiting at the door. Bring her in. I will, I will just go and get her just a moment. <laughs> Callie, come on. Callie, Callie, come baby. Come on baby girl. Oh, come on little one. everyone this is little Callie she's a bit of a scruff she's just woken up from a big big sleep haven't you yes you have you woken up from your big big sleep yes you have to go this way so everyone can see you and she's being a little bit snuggly <laughs> she's so she has she sleeps a lot obviously she's only nine weeks old you're not biting my fingers you're not biting my fingers and um so, oh, you, she's found my earrings for the first time. <laughs> oh, she's so adorable. But usually after she's had a big sleep, she'll go straight up to the toilet. She's actually very well toilet trained already, which is amazing. And um, yeah, and then she has something to eat and then she has a huge play and goes absolutely crazy. So she's kind of zo zooming up for that crazy time at the moment. Aren't you? You're getting ready for your crazy time? Yes, I know. Yes, you have to go this way so everyone can see your pretty face. Yes, hang on, I'll tilt the camera down a little bit so you can see her a bit better. There we go. Look, you're hiding down there. There she is. There she is. So we're trying to get her used to letting us wipe her eyes. Being a Maltese, they get the, the tear staining. And so we're trying to get her used to letting us um, touch her face and wipe her eyes because that's going to be a constant daily thing that she'll need to have done. And um, there she is. Isn't she adorable? <laughs> but she's brought such joy to our, our lives and, and um, to our hearts. She's just such a little sweetie. And she's... Um, when she's, when she's had all her vaccinations, she'll go to the groomer and get a proper clip and everything so that she's, um, not that she needs one yet because she's nice and fluffy, but we would like to get the hair out of her eyes a little bit. But um, she's not ready for that just yet. And she's not trained with scissors or anything like that yet, so we can't um, clip her around the face or anything yet. Are you snuggling? Hey, are you snuggling? But yeah, so she's a purebred Maltese and um nine weeks old she is she's very very cute <laughs> thank you everyone yeah so she will be my little um my little craft room companion yes that's my finger that's my finger are you chewing my finger i didn't bring any toys in for you did i she'll be my little companion um my daughter brooke's taken a couple of weeks off work to um, do some intensive training with her and then um, she'll start puppy preschool soon. Won't you? Yes, but she's very, very clever. Aren't you? Are you clever? Yes. And she's got her new little collar on. I don't know if you can see her little pink and white collar. It's hard to see it under all the fluff. But she's getting used to that today because that was a new thing we started just last night. She's actually really hard to hold because she's so tiny. She looks bigger than she is because of all the fur, but she's actually really, really tiny. Stop chewing. <laughs> You're chewing. Are you snuggling? Are you snuggling? There. Oh, you're going to go back to sleep. Hey. <laughs> she's super spoiled already. All right, you want to go out with the girls? Oh, you're going to snuggle mummy. Are you going to snuggle mummy? Hmm? Okay, say bye everyone. Say bye. <laughs> I'll send her back out with the girls. All right, come on. You go, you go and play. There you go. Thank you. Oh, little fluff ball. <laughs> yeah, she's actually tinier than what she looks because it's all, um, all my lighting's just gone weird. Hang on, I'll let it focus back on, there we go. Um, 
she's all fluff but under all that fluff she's got the tiniest little head and the tiniest little body she only weighs about one and a half kilos um, she's really really little so she's actually that she is the runt of the litter she was the smallest little girl um, there were five boys and two girls and she was the smallest but um, by no means the weakest at all she was beating up her brothers and <laughs> <laughs> standing up for herself so that's a good thing yeah so um ah uh, thank you everyone yes she does love her cuddles yeah so we have a little doggy playpen for her as well so um she we've trained her to go in there and, and we can actually it's a um it's like one of those pop-up shelters you know though it's a pop-up playpen so you can fold it down and travel with it which is awesome um, but it's for a little dog it's it's really great and we um, put her in there at night time as well and we can zip up the front door so that she can't get out and um, but she's really good like she wakes up every two to three hours and she'll actually scratch to get out to go to the toilet so then my daughter she's sleeping in with my daughter at the moment in her room um, so until we sort of get her a bit better trained and then she'll probably either come into mine or go into Amber's room. And then, um, so she gets up with her and takes her out, but she's good. Like she doesn't go to the toilet in a pen, doesn't go into the, to the toilet in the house. Um, she scratches to let us know. We've shown her where she can go outside, out through the back door. So she goes to the back door and scratches on the back door and lets us know she needs to go out. So she's really, really good. Yeah. So, um, yes, so that is, <laughs> can you send Brooke up here please Basil is so naughty <laughs> well actually Brooke's doing some um, animal training courses at the moment she's done a dog training course before um, but currently she's undertaking a different course for her work actually which is animal training so it looks at all the science behind it and the behavioral um, side of things so yes so yes maybe you do need her up there to sort Basil out <laughs> Oh, uh, great little lap dogs. Yes, yes, we hope so. We hope she enjoys her um, her cuddles continually as she grows. But yeah, she's got her little safe space in her little playpen. So we've made it a rule that if she goes into the playpen, we don't touch her in the playpen because that's her safe place. Um, so um, yeah, but then mostly during the day, she's actually sleeping out of that on her little rug um, or in her little bed. She's got a bed. She's got a She's got beds, she's got rugs, she's got playpen, she's got everything, spoilt dog. <laughs> and lots of toys, <laughs> new toys, plus we kept some of Molly's toys for her as well. So we talked to her all the time about her big sister Molly. And um, yeah, not that she understands, but it helps us. <laughs> so yeah, so she's got some of Molly's things as well. And we'll gradually bring out more and more as she gets bigger or swap the toys over. So yeah, anyway, I could talk about her all day. And we do, we sit and watch her all day. <laughs> Hence, I haven't got much work done all weekend. Um, yes, yeah, we are Tina Marie. She's um, quite well trained from the breeders, actually, with her litter. They, they had a little doggy door, so they were trained quite well to go outside and use that to go to the bathroom. And yeah, she's really good. Didn't even cry on the first night or the second, last night was the second night. Didn't cry at all. Um, the only time she got up and started scratching was to go out to the toilet, but she didn't actually cry or anything. Just, um, yeah, sleeps really well. So she's a good little girl. And she's very, very loved. <laughs> In case you couldn't tell. <laughs> um, Megan said we had rain last week. Um, oh, and Dachshunds do not like to get wet. Yeah, especially their feet. Um, thank goodness you'd polish the floorboards. <laughs> yeah. Actually, we've discovered that um, Callie doesn't like the wet grass either and um, she is hesitant to go out during the night and first thing in the morning when the grass is wet, she's very, very hesitant to go out there to um, do her business but um, Brooke's been encouraging her and she's been going. Um, a little bit itchy we're thinking from the grass too so we're watching that. She hasn't welted up or anything but she seems to be a little bit itchy every time she's been outside on the grass. Um, and Molly had grass allergies, so we know about that. So just keeping an eye on that. But um, 
if it because we're not letting her spend too much time out there on the grass while she's so small because she's so close to the grass um, and John's going to keep the grass cut really short for her too so um, to help alleviate that but you know little dogs and their sensitive skin especially the white ones so yeah they are great time wasters Megan yes definitely all we've been doing all weekend is playing with her watching her sleep playing with her feeding her training her <laughs> Oh, get her little booties. Well, they wouldn't even have any to fit her, Robin. She's so tiny. We were lucky to even get a collar to fit her um, and a harness. We just put the collar on her last night for the first time. Started Well, we started training her with that yesterday afternoon. Um, we've left it on her all day. Took it off overnight, obviously, when she's sleeping. Put it back on her today. But um, she's not been too impressed about the collar. So she's still getting used to that. Then we have to start training her on a harness so that we can start doing her proper um, puppy training. But um, yeah, booties, I, one, I don't think they'd fit her, and two, I don't think she would walk in them at the moment. She's just, <laughs> she's getting used to all the sights and sounds of our house. Um, there's still a couple of rooms she hasn't investigated yet. We haven't let her into all of the house yet because um, it's such a big house, two-story big house, so um, doing things gradually so we don't overwhelm her. But yeah, if only we could get booties for her, that would be that would be great, but <laughs> she wouldn't wear them. <laughs> uh, um, Glenda says, when it's raining, she has to take Lily out under the umbrella to go to the toilet as she hates the rain. Yeah, we used to do that with Molly too sometimes. <laughs> And we actually bought a rain jacket for Molly and we used to put a rain jacket on Molly um, when she used to go out when it was raining too. Um, got a cat collar um, when we first got Basil and Frank. Yeah, we did that too with um, one of our other dogs um, two dogs ago. So it was the dog before Molly, it was Sophie. We had a little cat collar for her as her first collar as well. But um, But now they sell the puppy collars so... It's a little bit easier, although they don't sell much in, they don't have much stock in the way of puppy collars for tiny puppies. So, um, yeah, but we managed to find one, so all good. <laughs> all right, so I could talk about puppies all day, but of course, you know, we're here to craft. So how about we get onto some crafting? Um, now, I wanted to tell you that we only have, what have we got? Um, what's today? The 22nd. We've got six days left of celebration. I'm looking over there because that's where my calendar is on the wall. Six days left of celebration. So I hope that you all by now have got all of the beautiful free products that you had on your wish list. If not, grab them now because when celebration is over, you won't be able to get those products from this catalog anymore. So I pulled out all of the um, products from here that I have, which I think is all of them. I think I have all of them now. Um, and I've made cards with, you, with each of them as well. So I thought we would um, look at all of those and then we're going to make some cards, but we're not using those to make our card. Oh, I might be using the sentiment. I haven't decided. So I was designing the card um, before I went live today, but I haven't quite finished it yet. So we'll be doing that. Um, we're semi-flying by the seat of our pants today. <laughs> I've prepared some of it, but not all of it. Um, so what I might do is I might tip the camera down um, onto the desktop. I'll show you all the products and the cards as well, some of which you may have seen, but if you um, have missed them, um, you'll get to see them again today. Uh, so I can show you all of those. And if you have any questions about celebration, please let me know. Um, if you need any help, I'm happy to help you. Um, if you don't have a demonstrator, a Stampin' Up! demonstrator yet, then I would love to be your demonstrator and I'd love to help you. So feel free to get in contact with me, ask me any questions. Um, I'd be more than happy to help you. Um, now in saying that as well, while we are looking at the celebration um, or talking about the celebration products, um, I wanted to let you know as well, not only can you earn free products during celebration, so you've got six more days, 
but also too if you love Stampin' Up products and um, you perhaps might already have a wish list then this is a great time to join Stampin' Up as well. And I would love to have you join my team because when you join, you actually, on top of your starter kit that you get to choose all of the products to put in there, um, you also get $100 worth of designer series paper for free on top of that. So it's five packs, here they are here. It's five packs of these beautiful designer series papers in our color ranges. So that's in the um, the regals. Now let me make sure I get them right. The regals, the neutrals, the subtles, the brights, and one of the in colors. So the um, the current in color, which would be the 2020 to 2022 in colors. Um, yeah, it just won't be the new ones that will come out in the new annual catalog in May. But these, are, it's like a, an early release because these papers won't actually be available until the new annual catalog comes out in May. So if you join Stampin' Up, you get to have them now and you get to have them for free. So it's $100 worth of paper. It's 200 pieces of 6x6 designer series paper. And they come in each of the um, color packs. Actually, I didn't get them out, but I do have one of them. I'll show you what they look like. Um, this one so they come in a pack like this and um, so this is just one pack so you will get five packs of the different color families this is the subtles so you've got all these beautiful colors and there's all different patterns they're double-sided um, so there's four different patterns that you get in each of the colors and it's a total of 40 sheets in each of the so that kind of gives you a look of the, the different patterns and you get those in each of the colors in each of the color families. So that's pretty awesome. So to join, it's only $169 and you can become a happy shopper. So you don't need to um, run classes. You don't need to do Facebook lives like I do. You don't need to do any of that if you don't want to. You can purely just join Stampin' Up just for the discount on all of your beautiful products. So you'll straight away, as soon as you um, join and purchase that starter kit, all future orders will be minimum of 20% discount. And then uh, you can actually build that up to 25% um, over the time. So it's a great time to join. Only paying $169 for your starter kit, but you get to choose $235 worth of product in that starter kit. So it can be products from the annual catalog or from the mini catalog, from the beginner catalog, any products that you like, you can pop in there in your starter kit. So it's a fantastic, um, fantastic time to join to get those additional $100 worth of product. So rather than actually, so rather than $235 worth, you'd be getting $335 worth for just $169 plus free shipping on that starter kit. So fantastic time to join. And if you would like to know more information about my awesome team of beautiful, beautiful women, um, and we welcome men as well. However, we don't have any men in our team yet, but one day we might have, we welcome everybody. So um, yeah, for sure get in contact with me and I'd love to have a chat with you, give you more information and I can help you um, with the join up process as well if you're unsure. There's no locking contracts. If you decide it's not for you, you can leave any time. No problem at all. So I will let you think about that. If you have any questions, feel free to get in contact with me. You can send me a private message. Um, or you can email me at mandyspapercraftcreations at gmail.com. So I'll let you all um, sit with that, have a think about that if you're not already a demonstrator. So I have some of my team members on here today as well. It's always great to have my team members along um, for my Facebook Lives. It's great to have you all here. And um, we've got some other friends here watching as well today, which is fantastic. All right, let me pop this to the side and I'll get the camera ready. I'll flip it down onto the desk and um, I can start showing you these awesome um, products. And then we'll get crafting with some new products from the mini catalog. All right, so just give me a moment. I'll cover up the camera and I'll get that ready. Just bear with me for one moment. 
Alrighty, and I'll flip those cameras. All good. Alright, here we go. Oh, we got the squeaks again today. Oops, hang on a minute. I haven't got that one quite right. There we go. Alrighty. Just takes me a moment to get this all set up. Lower that a little bit. Okay, oops, I'll do that up a bit tighter or you're all going to be falling down. Well, you won't be falling down, but my camera will be falling down. Be a bit like London Bridge falling down. That wouldn't be any good, would it? Okay, now let's see. How straight did I get it today? Every time it's always a bit of a trick to see how straight I can get it. Oh, not too bad today. That's not too bad at all. Let's go that way a little bit. And I'll just move these down just a tad and over a little bit. There we go. Alrighty. Good, adjust the lights. Fantastic. Okay, celebration. And, oh, I think we're still a little bit, still a little bit crooked, aren't we? Hang on a sec, which way do we need to go? That way, I think. Is that better? Hopefully. I like to have it nice and straight, otherwise it can be a bit annoying. Well, it annoys me, so I figure if it annoys me, it probably annoys other people too. There we go, let's move this over a tad and up. All right, so if you are shopping with me, then you can go to my blog, which is mandyspapercraftcreations.blogspot.com. Um, I do also have a website as well, which you can go to as well. Um, but on my blog, you will actually find lots of creative inspiration. I've also got information there about my technique club. Um, I've got some tutorials for sale as well, if you like tutorials, all sorts of things. And there's also the link to my online store. There is also a link there for joining uh, my team if you are interested in that as well. So go there to uh, my blog. If you are shopping with me, remember to use my host code in, your, in my online store. And for all orders over $50, you will receive a thank you gift from me and a lovely thank you card as well. Okay, so celebration. In the celebration brochure is lots and lots of beautiful products. Let me show you some of those. So you might remember the Darling Donkey. I think this was the first one that I played with um, out of the celebration brochure. I absolutely love this one. So I've got, I've got all my cards actually in the little plastic envelopes to protect them. So it might be a bit noisy as I bring them out. So that was the first one that I made. You might remember that one. I posted, I made it here on um, one of my Facebook Lives and then I posted about that one as well. I also blogged this one too, I think. So um, you might remember that one, super, super cute. I incorporated a few other products as well from the annual catalog, but I really, really loved this one. Then I did more of a simple design using some other dies, which was um, this, this one using the same stamp set. So using one of the other donkeys in this, from this stamp set and Oh, is this one of the favorite cards I've done? This one, Tina Marie? Yeah, I love this one too. I think it was pretty cute. I love the colors. I love purple and green together. In fact, I've pulled out my gorgeous grape um, stamp set today as well to play with that again because uh, purple, purple and pink really are my two favorite colors. Ah, oh, yes, it is that one. So I made this one as well. And then I did a granny apple green version of that one as well. Super cute. So they're the ones that I, that's all I've done so far with the Darling Donkeys actually, surprisingly, but I had so many beautiful products that I was trying to use all of them. Um, some of them I didn't get to yet though. So that's that one. Then we've got the Corner Bouquet, which I think was the last one I might've played with um, on my last Facebook Live. And one of the cards that I made, I've already given away, but this is one of the other ones that I made I didn't make this one on my Facebook Live. I think this was the one I did afterwards, but it was the same layout as the one that I had done um, in my live, um, just using different colors. So there was that one. 
and I did make this one on my live Oops. oh I've left my paper in there for my ombre paper to decorate the inside when I put my insert inside so I made that one which was a super easy um, very easy simple stamping um, layout and just adding that beautiful polka dot tulle ribbon and then I made this one afterwards as well but I did post this one so this is the one that um, it's a fun fold card so it opens like that and I simply just stamped that same corner bouquet stamp just stamped off the um, the bottom and I sort of had it at that, that angle rather than having it in the corner like that I turned it at a bit of an angle like that so that it was stamped off the bottom of the card and then I just colored that with um, stamp and write markers I just went over that with stamp and um I do use stamp and write markers or did I use stamp and blends good question now oh actually do I have let me see mm, stamp and blends I used yes and I just quickly went over them just to give a bit of pop of color so, but I love that fun fold card. That's one of my favorite fun folds. I've done that one a few times, that same design. Okay, so that was that one. Then we also have Approaching Perfection. This is a really fun one and I haven't used this one yet. This one's still brand new. This one's actually a red rubber stamp and you can see I haven't even put my stickers onto the back of my stamps yet. So this one's a brand new one. Um, but this one's got some really fun sayings in it as well. Um, I love this one. Newsflash, birthdays found to be good for health. Studies show that people who have more birthdays live the longest. <laughs> so, so this one's really great for your fun birthday sayings. And then you've got some candles and a little balloon there as well. So really fun one, that one. Then we have... The, of course we've got all of the beautiful designer series papers and I've got more stamp sets over there as well but we had the ombre paper now the ombre paper this is all that I have left I have used up most of this I'm just trying to get out what is left so you've got this beautiful ombre paper and this has been really, really popular. This has been one of the most popular. Oh, I think that's, is that the same? That's the same. This is one of the most popular um, products in the catalog, in the brochure. Oh, there we go. That's right. Okay. So we've got the, the spotty ones. And on the other side of the spotty ones is the other colors. And there, ah, oh, you used this in Jacqueline's card, did you? Awesome. Oh, the stamp set or the DSP Robin? I think you might have meant the stamp set. And then we've got these two gorgeous ones as well. And on the other side, we've got the other two colors, the Granny Apple Green and the Rococo. So, and you get, um, in that paper pack, you get 48 sheets of that designer series paper so in all of those great colors and designs so really really fun this one's just a double up i've got two of those ones left so yes so you can see how beautiful that paper is pop that back in there then we also had this paper and you can see i've been using all of these beautiful oh the comment about the birthdays yes they're really funny comments um, Robin aren't they they're fantastic so this one you can see I've used quite a bit as well I've chopped up quite a bit of this one so this is the paper blooms I always have to check paper blooms designer series paper and yes I've been chop chop chopping this one but this is really beautiful you might have seen my Facebook live a few weeks ago of the ones that I made with these I gave those cards away actually um, to um, I can't remember who I gave them to now but anyway yes I gave them away so I don't have those cards anymore to show you but yeah these papers are beautiful and let's turn over the other side I'll show you the designs on the other side as I put them back into the packet love this one love the Rococo Rose so pretty all of these ones stripey ones and this one this is one of my favorites as well 
so pretty love that so yeah so that one as well so with all of these celebration products if you haven't seen celebration before or you're not sure about um, how celebration works for every $90 that you spend, you can earn a free, or you can choose a free celebration product from the celebration brochure. Now, where did I just put my brochure down? Oh, I've probably put something on top of it. Yes, I have, there we go. <laughs> so, we have level one and level two products in celebration. So the ones I've just shown you are some of the level one products and we have others as well then we have level two products as well which when you spend 180 dollars you get to choose those level two products which um, i'll show you in a moment as well so there's lots and lots of choices um, yeah and the products that you purchase can be from the annual catalog the mini catalog or the beginner catalog so long as it adds up to 90 dollars or more than 90 dollars you can choose a free product from the celebration brochure all right, we also have, this is another one of the level ones products for $90. And again, you can see I've been chopping into this one. And in fact, we're using a little piece of this one in our project today. But I love all the patterns in these ones. They're beautiful. Um, this one's also been very popular. Um, oh, and Megan says, oh, Mandy, I did chop my paper and make your card. Yay! Fantastic! Forgot to post it to you though, sorry. Oh, no worries, Megan. Did you? Uh, if you took a photo, feel free to still send me the photo as well. I'd love to see it. So, yeah, this one, this one's been actually quite chopped up. This is the, let me pull out all the other chopped up pieces. So these ones come in 12 by 12 inches. And um, yeah, so you can see I've cut them down a fair bit, but you kind of get the idea of how beautiful they are. And then, of course, you've got the opposite side, and the opposite side has got more sort of, still patterned, but more sort of solid-y type um, designs on them. There's another one there, the green. And this one reminds me of licorice all sorts. <laughs> These are the reverse sides of some of them as well. Um, but, yeah, just so beautiful. So a great way to get lots and lots of patterned papers to make some beautiful projects. Um, you might like to um, make cards. I mainly make cards nowadays, but you might be a scrapbooker as well. And these are great for scrapbooking. Um, you might like to do 3D projects, off the page projects. Um, yeah, these are great papers for the, all those beautiful projects. Um, Okay, and then we've also got, done that one. Then we've got, let me just check my brochure and see if I've shown you all of those. Oh no, I've got the other one as well, which we might be using today, is this one, Heal Your Heart. And I think last time I filmed a Facebook Live, my head was a little bit scattered and I used this one and I think I might've told everyone it was from the mini catalog, but it's actually not. It's actually a free celebration item. So this has got some beautiful sentiments in here. Um, it's got a lovely thank you, which I've used on a couple of cards. Let me show you. Um, here we go. And this is incorporating the um, designer series paper I, I just showed you as well. Made some lovely thank you cards there with that one. And I've used some dies as well. Um, I think this is the... Stitch So Sweetly dies, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, if anybody knows, um, off the top of my head. Um, oh, you've actually made it for me, have you, Megan? Oh, lovely. Thank you so much. I thought you meant that you had um, made it and you'd forgotten to post the photo to me, not the actual card to me. Oh, thank you, Megan. I'll look forward to that. That will be beautiful. <laughs> Um, yeah, so this one's also got some beautiful sentiments in there um, for perhaps when somebody's going through a hard time, um, if they've lost a loved one, um, uh, those types of occasions as well. So even, I don't know what I would do without you. So even, you know, sending a beautiful sentiment to a good friend or a family member or someone that really helps or supports you. Um, yeah, just beautiful sentiments. 
I like this one too. I can't promise to always fix your problems, but I can promise you won't ever face them alone. That goes really well with the we're in this together. So that's a beautiful stamp set that you can earn for free with a purchase of $90. So there's some a few ideas of how you can just use it. Use that beautiful designer series paper as well and focus on that and then just use your sentiment. Oh, there was another one as well that I had to show you using that gorgeous designer series paper. This was the one I did last, I think, on my last Facebook Live using the Hey Girlfriend stamp set. Super cute. I love this one. Um, let me take it out of the bag because that bag is reflecting. Oh, I've got extra pieces in there because I was ready to make another one, but I never got it done. So I've got my extra bits in there, see, ready to go. <laughs> so again, using this beautiful designer series paper, which again is free with a $90 purchase. You can choose that designer series paper. So it's another idea of using it um, just to give your card that beautiful background. And what I did is I pulled the colors from that designer series paper and used those colors for the layout of my and the coloring of my um, design for my card. So always great to do that. Great color inspiration in our designer series papers. Okay, so I think that was all the $90, the, the level one um, products that you can earn with $90. Did I show this one? Yes, I showed that one. That's right. So then, so we've got the Darling Donkeys, we've got the Ombre and the Approaching Perfection. We did the Corner Bouquet and the Heal Your Heart stamp set. Yes, the fit, the um, flower and field I showed you. And then we go into the products that you can earn when you spend $180. So this stamp set is a bigger stamp set. So this is one of the ones that you can earn if you're ordering $180. So you can get this one um, for free. Now as Stampin' Up! demonstrators, even though um, we are demonstrators, we still get to take advantage of all of the customer specials and promotions and things like that as well. Plus we get our discount on top of everything as well, which is fantastic. We get the best of both worlds being a demonstrator. So this one is with an order of $180. However, keep in mind that you, if, if you are putting in an order of $180, you might wanna consider joining for just $169 and being able to um, put $235 worth of product into your starter kit. Then you could place another order and get this one for free if you would like to do so, and then you would get your 20% discount on that next order. Um, but if you wanna just put in a $180 order, that's still okay. Perhaps you would like to see if friends or family might like to combine orders with yours as well, um, and you could get this stamp set. But this one is really beautiful. Now the images are just shown at 65% because there are so many. There's 17 stamps in this stamp set. But if I open this and show you, again, this one hasn't had any ink on it yet. This is brand new. I haven't used it. So you can see here how big the designs are compared to the images on the front of the case. The re reason that they're reduced is just so that they can fit all of the images on the front of the case. But you've got the solid, uh, sorry, you've got the outline of the design there. And then these parts here are for easy coloring. If you don't want to color your stamped images with your blends or with your um, inks or your stamp and write markers, um, you can simply just ink up these shapes and they, they fit within the stamps. Um, so it's called two-step stamping. Really, really great. Yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it, Megan? So beautiful. I can't believe I haven't used it yet, but I haven't actually done much stamping in the last week um, because of everything happening with John's dad, or last week and a half, actually. Um, everything with John's dad, so I haven't um, had haven't been able to stamp at all. Um, but yeah, really beautiful. So I just wanted to show you how beautiful that one was. And oh, I love this butterfly too. How gorgeous is that butterfly? Beautiful sentiments in this one as well. Thinking of you, hello friend, best wishes, thanks so much, love, hope. I think there's a sentiment in there for every occasion. Really beautiful. All right, so that's that one. Then if 
again if you're um, purchasing $180 this is another level 2 product so we have the Berry Blessing stamp set plus we have coordinating um, designer series paper again you can see I've chopped this one up now I held a class using this just recently as well um, and that was a really fun class I do have one of the cards from that class to show you the other ones um, I don't have anymore because I've given them away but let me just show you these beautiful papers which I still have I actually still have plenty of these even though I have used some I'm trying not to pull them right out of the packet because then I have to try and get them back in again. So, but just to give you an idea of these beautiful papers. Let's pull them out just a little bit further. There we go. So you get an idea there of the beautiful papers and these come together with the Berry Blessings in the Celebration um, brochure when you purchase $180 as a customer or as a demonstrator. And this is one of the, the cards that we made in um, my Sweet Strawberry class. So these ones, this is actually a, um, a fun fold card. So it's like an easel card. It sits up like that and it folds flat to go in the envelope like so. So super cute and you can write your message in there. If you wanna write a really long message, you could put another um, white, piece of cardstock in here and here and you can write on the three panels I just put a small one there um, so yeah so that one sits up like that really super cute oops but this one I also use the sweet strawberry stamp set from the mini catalog because that coordinates beautifully with not only this stamp set but but with this designer series paper goes really beautiful with that um, so I just wanted to show you that one as well Again, this stamp set doesn't have any ink on it. It's brand new. I haven't used this one yet because I was using my Sweet Strawberry um, stamp set and my Coordinating Punch and the Designer Series paper. So let me just turn this over and see if I've shown you all of the designs on the opposite side. I think I might have had them all turned over actually so that you could see both. Yeah, there we go. Really, really pretty papers. Love these. There's even some plain ones there. You can even use them for masculine cards, some of those. This one reminds me of one of my mum's old tablecloths from when we, one of, I think it was a picnic tablecloth that we used to have. But yeah, super cute. Love that one. All right. And then there is this one here. The Punch Party stamp set, and this one can be earned um, when you host a party or with qualifying sales. So what that means is if you turn to the back of your brochure, um, there's information in there on page 16 and 17 about hosting a party. So if you um, would like to host a party, um, I'm doing online parties at the moment, but um, we're running very close to the end of celebration, so um, trying to squeeze one in now, um, it's not impossible, but it would take a lot of coordination. But even if you don't want to host a party, but you want to just gather some sales or some orders from perhaps your friends or family, if you get orders of over $500, then you will get this stamp set absolutely free. Um, and then you also would get stampin rewards on those orders as well so you would get additional um, you would get an additional 12 percent um, in free products of your choice as well so this one coordinates with some of our punches that we have we have the postage stamp punch which i just got recently and i don't think i've used it yet postage stamp punch there's an oval um, punch in the mini catalog a new one that coordinates with those ones and some of these sentiments will actually fit within our heart punch as well. This one, the actual heart shape here doesn't quite fit in the heart punches, but the sentiments will. So this one is just a little bit of a different um, shape, I believe. I don't actually have the heart punches, so I haven't tested it. But that's what I, I have um, read 
So yeah, so that is a beautiful one that you can earn for free with qualifying sales. So if you have any questions about any of that, please feel free to let me know. So remember, you've only got six more days to earn um, free product during celebration. So don't miss out. If you still had your wish list, don't wait any longer. Alrighty. Let's go on with what we're going to be creating with today. So today we are going to be playing with some of the products from the mini catalog. And again, if you don't have a mini catalog and you would like one or you would like an annual catalog, if you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love to get these catalogs out to you. So let me know. Um, you do need to be here in Australia, however. Um, I can't sell to anybody outside of Australia, unfortunately. So, um, but yes, if you're in Australia and you would like one, please let me know. So we're going to be looking at page 58. So we have the gorgeous welcoming window stamp set and we're going to be playing with the coordinating dies. Now, when you, these can be purchased separately, the stamp set and the dies. However, if you purchase them together as a bundle, you will save yourself 10%. And these dies do th fit through our mini machine, which we will be using today. So these two products together, so purchasing the bundle, which is the welcoming window bundle, you'll see the information up on the top of the um, page here, is $87.25. Now that's very close to the $90 to receive free celebration products. So $87.25, and if you just threw in a packet of Stampin' Dimensionals or something small like that, bump it up over the $90, then you'd be able to get a free celebration product as well. So keep that in mind when you are looking for um, these, um, this bundle. All right, so let me show you that bundle up close. This is the beautiful stamp set here. Um, lots and lots of beautiful sentiments and um, different components to put together a beautiful um, window with a window box etc we've got bricks we're going to use some of those today now these images are shown at 90 percent if i show you the stamp set some of which i've pulled some of the stamps out already you'll see that these are a bit larger than the actual image printed on the cover just so they could fit all those images in it's a photopolymer stamp set, which is great. It makes it easy to see through, to line things up. And this is the die set. So this is the window flower box dies. Now today is the first time I'm using this. So I've started um, putting together a card, but I haven't quite finished it yet. So in this one, I haven't put these on my magnetic sheets yet, which I will do. When you get your dies, they'll be on this plastic Oh, sorry, on this paper sheet or cardboard sheet with um, double-sided tape that you can just lift these off. I do like to keep mine on magnetic sheets, which just makes it easier for me to get them on and off in a hurry, holds them in place really well. Um, and the magnetic sheets I just get from eBay. They're A4 and then I just cut them down. Yes, you do have this one. I've seen some of your cards you've made with this one, Tina Marie, and they're beautiful. Great. Yes, it is a lovely one. So in this one, we have dies here that will cut out the window, the jug, the um, terracotta pots, um, the three terracotta pots actually, the uh, window, um, uh, sorry, the shutter panel here, as well as the flowers. Now these flowers layer inside of each other and I'll show you how to do that. I just did a quick little practice before I went live. Um, so that I could show you and then we've got some beautiful sentiments sentiments for Mother's Day sentiments for birthday Thank you friendship welcome um, Wishing our paths crossed a little more often. I like that one very relevant for um, Today's culture, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, then you've got some additional dies here. You've got the beautiful window the shutters the window uh, the window box the little hinges for the shutters um yeah and so and the other dies cut out all the other bits and pieces from this stamp set so this is a fantastic bundle to have you can make lots of beautiful cards so let's go ahead with what i've started and i will show you now i have got um oh actually you know what i didn't pull out let me just grab my 
Oh, well, I'll show you some of the colors I've got out. So these are some of the colors that we're going to be using today. Um, I've got Garden Green, Gorgeous Grape, Melon Mambo, and Crushed Curry for my flowers. And then for my shutters and my brickwork, I've got Basic Grey and Smoky Slate. Um, and Basic Grey I'll probably use for my sentiment as well. I originally had out Magenta Madness and Rococo Rose. However, Rococo I might use. Magenta I decided was just a little bit too bright for what I wanted. So I had that out, just haven't put that back away yet. Okay, so I'm just going to grab, I'll show you what I've come up with so far. This is what I've got so far. Whoops, nothing is stuck down, obviously, as you can see. I'm going to move this up a little bit. It's in the way. Nothing is stuck down so that we can keep having a play. But I've got my little hinges cut, my, my brick wall is done, but I'm going to make another one with you all so you can see how I did that. I've got my shutters, my planter box ready to put my plants in and I made some little curtains I'm going to show you how to do that and you can see behind there I've got some wallpaper that you can see in the distance through the curtains so I've got to add my plants I've got to add my sentiment and I'm going to add a color layer behind this one all right so I'm going to show you how I put together all of that so far I just forgot to pull out my base so let me grab my base some smoky slate for my base I'm going to cut that down and I'll bring in some more whisper white because I want to show you how I created the brick background um, and I'll show you how I did the wind the um, the curtains as well okay so we'll need a little bit more of that I might leave that out actually because we might use we might need some more of that okay so I'll set this aside for the moment and we'll bring in my trimmer and I'll just show you how to cut down all of this cardstock. So a lot of you will already know how to cut down your cardstock, but if you have not cut down cardstock before, here in Australia, our cardstock is in A4 size, okay? So it is, um, let me remember, 29.7 centimeters by, what is it, 21. Okay, so we're gonna cut that um, we're going to feed it in with the long side and we're going to um, cut that in half. Now on our Stampin' Up! trimmer, we have two blades. The lighter one is a scoring blade for when we want to score our cardstock. So we don't need that one just now. So we're going to slide that to the top. The dark color, the dark gray blade is the cutting blade. That's the one that we want to use. So I'm going to pop this in and I'm going to use the measurements that are up here at the top. I'm going to measure this at 14.85, which is exactly half of an A4 card piece of cardstock. Now there's a little edge here along the top, and there's also one along the bottom edge, edge as well with measurements at the bottom edge also. Um, also too, we have this swinging arm, which swings out if you need to measure something that's really long. You've got those additional measurements. It goes right up to 43 and a half centimeter, 43.6 centimeters actually which is about 17 and a quarter inches. So you've got the measurements there in centimeters and in inches, but we're just gonna cut this at 14.85, resting it against that little groove at the top to hold it in place. And I'm going to cut towards that groove so that I know my cardstock will stay in place because it's pushing up against that groove. Okay, so now I've got two card bases. Okay, so that's as easy as that is. Now with this piece, this is going to form my base, so I want to score this in half. So I'm going to score this piece at 10 and a half. So I'm putting it in with the long edge across the top. I'm going to score that at 10 and a half. So give that a couple of runs with the scoring blade. And then I'm going to fold it towards the mountain fold. So the part of the fold that is um, sticking up not the part that is indented down. That's the valley fold. We want to fold it towards the mountain fold, the mountain fold being on the inside, all right? Then, so that that will sit down 
um, nicely, I'm going to bring in my bone folder. And with my bone folder, I'm just going to burnish that folded edge. That's what we call burnishing, just rubbing that along the edge. And that helps my cardstock to um, sit nicely and gives me a nice crisp folded edge. All right, now with my Whisper White piece, we actually now have basic white cardstock, not Whisper White, but I'm still using up my old Whisper White cardstock, but the new cardstock now is basic white. It's a little bit more of a vibrant white color than this one. So I'm just going to, again, cut this in half. So yeah, I'm just using up all of my Whisper White first before I go ahead and use um, my basic white. So I'm going to cut this one again in ten and a half. So basically then, rather than scoring, I've cut this time and that gives me two card front sizes. These are like my workable sizes that I like to have. And then I won't cut this one yet until I know how I'm going to use it because I might want to use it as a card base or I might end up cutting that one down to use it for other stamped images or card fronts or whatever. Okay, so that's that. So they will form the basis for our card. I'll put that one aside and we'll keep these ones out. All right, so now I've got my card base. Now I'm going to cut down one of these white pieces. So I'll set the other one aside. I'm going to cut one of these down um, a little bit further to create our card front. And this one is going to, I'm just checking my measurements. Yep, yeah, that's that one. So this one this time. This is going to um, be the one that we're going to stamp our brick wall onto. I'm going to cut it down to uh, 8.7 wide. So let's go 8.7 by 13.1. 13.1, yep. There we go. With your blades too, if you find that you're constantly cutting in the one direction, and I like to, I always like to cut upwards towards where I've got the cardstock resting on that little groove. If you find your um, over time your blade is starting to get a little bit blunt, you can take your blade out and turn it around and use the other side of the blade because it will wear, if you're constantly cutting the same way each time, it will wear your blade on one side. But by turning it around, you get more use out of your blade and you'll get to um, use it for a lot longer. So just keep that in mind as well. It's really easy to do. There's a little groove down here um, at the bottom. It's sort of in line, where, or it's just above actually where the measurement line is. There's a little groove there. You just bring your blade down towards that, give it a little wiggle and it comes out and then you just twist it around. I won't because I'm still using that same side. Twist it around and then you give it a little wiggle back in and then you're ready to go again. Okay. All right. So I'll keep my little scraps because they're good for stamping sentiments. All right. Now the other thing is too, we are going to have another layer behind the brick wall, but I hadn't actually decided yet what color I'm going to put behind the brick wall until I do my flowers. However, I am thinking perhaps, let me see. So this is my sample, which isn't complete yet. But I was thinking one of the colors that will be in the flowers will go behind this. A bit, a bit of a smaller border than that though. But I hadn't yet decided on which color. And I might not know until we've done the flowers. But don't let me forget my extra layer, okay? If I forget it towards the end, please all yell out to me. Mandy, you forgot your extra layer. I need to make that layer before I stick this down. So don't let me forget. Because, you know, I get talking and sometimes I forget these things. All right, let's create our brick wall and I'll show you how to do that. So I might use, um, I've also got out the other colors that I was potentially going to use. Uh, the magenta, I think I'm not using that one. So I've got these ones as well. I've got Melamambo, Rococo. I've got the crushed curry, which matches with the curtains. So that could be good. Um, and then I've got the gorgeous grape as well. So one of those we'll use for behind the brick wall. But we'll decide when we put the rest of the card together. All right, with the brick wall, we are going to be using Smoky Slate. So we'll bring in our Smoky Slate. And we're going to be using the brick stamp. 
okay now the smoky slate is still going to be quite dark so what we want to do is to stamp it off each time we stamp that so that it gives you a lighter effect because we don't want it too heavy and um, harsh so I'm having it so that we've got that additional brick that is sticking out at the right hand side and that will help me to line everything up so just ink that up stamp it off on your scrap and then I'll do my first row at the top here there we go and I'm using my grid my mini grid paper as well let me just move that up a bit I'm using my mini grid paper so that it helps me to line everything up and then you'll see that where you line this up this brick will be sticking out and then you've got that little cutout bit there so they line up really easily there we go and we'll just do our next one now we want to stagger them a little bit this time so we don't want them to line up exactly because we want it to be like a brick wall there we go and then stagger again and hear my squeaky chair can you hear my squeaky chair i don't know if you can hear it on camera or not i can hear it very loudly <laughs> Let's stagger these. Great. Oh, I nearly stamped on my work surface then, didn't I? There we go. And stagger again. So this brick wall is really easy to use and I love this stamp. It's really awesome. It gives a great effect. And then just the last one. Oh, hey, Tracy, how you going? Did you just jump on, Tracy? I had our new little baby on at the beginning of the Facebook Live. You'll have to go back and watch later and see her. She's super adorable. All right, there we go. So we've got our brick wall. Oh, thank you. My puppy is adorable. Thank you. You must have seen the photos, did you? <laughs> She is super cute. She's such a little sweetheart. But I tell you what, she's got needle sharp teeth, of course, as all puppies do. But um, when she, I mean, we're trying to encourage her not to bite, obviously. And when she starts to get a bit crazy and start biting on things, that we get her chew toys and distract her with her little chew toys. But we're trying to train her not to, um, not to chew on everything else. <laughs> All right, so we've got our brick wall. Great. So then we're going to put a color behind that once we've um, decided which color. Okay, so that's great. Now, um, pretty much um, we, we'll do some stamping of the flowers next. I went ahead and I did stamp um, a couple here, but I'll show you how I did that. I'll keep on using this piece. I don't know why I stamped them down so low. I wasted all that cardstock. But that's okay we might be able to use that for sentiments so with the flowers there's two lots of flower stamps okay now the leaves or the greenery is separate to the flowers if you have a look in your on your actual stamp sheet let me see i'll turn it over this way so you can see i'll hold it up to the camera hopefully so you can see it tells you here which ones coordinate with which so this one says 1b and this one says 2b so you can see that these ones coordinate this one says 1a and this one says 2a so sorry so this one's one and this one's one so these two coordinate together so 1a 1b and then this one is uh, 2a 2b so these two coordinate together and there's also little arrows as well so it kind of shows you how to line them up so what I did with mine um, so these are my ones so what I did is I wrote a little one towards the inside on each of those so I know that those two coordinate together and where those lining up marks are I put a little I just use a, a black sharpie and I put a little mark on each of those so I knew where they lined up or roughly where they lined up so it'll make it much easier when I go to um, stamp these and I did the same on 
the other one as well. So this was the second one. And you can see again, if I turn that up that way, you can see again, I did try to write a little number two, which was a bit hard to write on these ones, but I've got the, the little lining up mark there and this one there. So I know that they roughly line up there. So you didn't know this? Yeah, I just, well, I just discovered it today when I opened up the stamp set, Tina Marie. So there you go, it might make it easier to, um, if you're having trouble lining that up, it might make it easier. They're quite easy to line up though. I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so we'll flip this one back over. Now being that it's photopolymer, I will use my stamp and pierce mat underneath just for that cushioning. Now I found what was easiest to do was to stamp the flowers first and then line up the leaves um, around them. Or you can do it the other way, but I just found that was easier for me. So um, flowers, let's do the gorgeous grape flowers first. And I'll get my garden green ready for the, the greenery. I'm running out of space here. My desk is looking quite crazy. All right, so taking notice of where that lining up little mark is that I created on there, using that purple, the gorgeous grape, I'm going to just stamp my flowers down. Remembering that there is my mark there at the top that I want to use to line up my um, my next piece or my floral, my, um, sorry, greenery. Okay, so let's set that one aside. I'll ink up our greenery. Find my little mark, there it is at the top and I know it was up here. Now you'll notice in this stamp, hopefully you can see this, there's some little cutout sections those little cutout sections are basically gonna line up where these flowers are. So remember, we've, we're going to line up where those flowers are as well as we've got our little mark at the top. So let's just, so you just rotate that ever so slightly to line those flowers up. You'll see how the, the greenery or the foliage just um, surrounds those flowers. And there we go, okay. So hopefully you're able to see that on camera. I'm just watching that back because the camera is a little bit delayed or the iPad's a little bit delayed. So hopefully that helped you um, learn how to line those up. All right, so let's do that with the other one now. I'll put those to the side to give them a clean in the moment. So we're gonna use Melon Mambo. And we've got our Garden Green again. So I'll bring in our Melon Mambo. Now I'm just going to see, am I going to have enough room to line that up? I might come over that way a little bit. Okay. All right. So we'll ink up the flowers. I've got my little mark at the top there. Stamp that about there. Ink up our greenery. Where was my mark? My mark was at the top. So I've actually stamped it up the opposite way this time. But I remember my mark was at the top. My little... Um, Sharpie marker and this one's at the top and now I'm going to use those little um, cut out pieces to line up with my flowers and remember where my mark was and I don't have my glasses on either so I'm trying to do this without glasses so let's see how we went oh I didn't line that one up properly look at that I stamped over that one all right let's do that one again I'll turn that up the other way we do have one already there and let me put my glasses on. That might help. We'll try that one again. All right, so ink up my flowers. There we go. Okay, my mark is over this side at the top. Ink up my flowers. I think I didn't have this rotated at the right angle. Let's see, which way did I? Oh, which way did I have this? Hang on a minute. Oh, there's my mark. I'm looking at the wrong thing. I was looking at my number one, not my mark. There's my mark at the top there. No wonder that didn't line up. Okay, so that's going to stamp off the page now. I'm going to need another piece of cardstock. Thankfully, I cut an extra one. So let's do another one. Right. That's the tricky thing with number ones and my little mark. All right. 
So there's my mark at the top there on the right. Let's ink this up again. Where is my mark? There it is on the edge at the top there. Okay. So this makes better sense. Oh, that looks better already. I can see that's going to line up. Oh, hopefully. Now that I say that, I shouldn't speak too soon, should I? There we go. Perfect. Yes, I was looking at my little mark in the middle there, but that's not my mark. That's my number one. That's my mark at the top. Okay, so there you go. You can see how you can line those up. It's really not that um, difficult. It's just that you have to line up the correct marks. <laughs> line up your marks and not your numbers. So we'll just stamp these off a little bit to remove any excess ink and then we'll give them a quick clean and then we'll move on. Okay. Now this one, of course, has been, um, is going to stain up a little bit because we've used one of those deep pinks. Um, so this is with the Melon Mambo. So it's just stained the photopolymer a little bit, but that's okay. They still work perfectly well. The other ones should be pretty good. The other colors, those colors don't seem to stain too badly. It's always the pinks and the reds and the deep blues as well. Some of the deep blues um, do stain up a little bit too. Okay, so we've got those ready to go. So we can do some of our die cutting now. Um, we won't use that one. Let me just put a, an X through that one. So I remember not to die cut that one. Okay, so I've got my little stamp, uh, my mini stamp and cut and emboss machine today. So super handy. And these dies all fit through this little machine. So I love this one. It's really great. I've got my washi tape there ready to go. Got my plate a little bit dirty. So if you haven't seen the mini yet, then um, where have you been? <laughs> the mini is a great little machine, super compact. It, um, it's really light, great to um, carry with you if you're traveling, if you're going to crops or classes, you can take your own machine with you. Um, super, super great little machine. It's got little rubber feet as well, which mine are a bit dusty and need to be wiped off. So if you're using it on a um, smooth surface, it will grip well to that. doesn't grip so well to my surface here because I've got additional surface on top of my desk. But if you're using it on a countertop or something like that, um, it helps to, to grip really well. And then the sides just fold out and it comes with the plates that you'll need to get started. Oops, where's my extra one? Um, where did the other one just go? I had all three. No, I've only got two in my hands. Where did I put my third one? Am I looking right past it? Did I put my machine on top of it? No. There are three plates and I had all of them a moment ago. And now, am I going crazy? There's only definitely two there, isn't there? Yes, there's my base plate and my one of my number two plates. I need my other number two plate. Where did I put it? Oh my goodness, I'm going crazy. I just had it. Okay, two secs. Let me find this plate because I've dumped all of my paper over on my desk. I'm just thinking I might have put something down on top of it and because it's clear, it's not as easy to find it. Oh wait, there it is. It's not even over there, it's up at the top. There it is. It was underneath my dies. <laughs> of course it was. Oh my goodness, thought I was going crazy. All right, so these dies from this set all fit in the mini machine. Um, yes, so these three plates are the ones that come with the mini. So you've got your number one plate, which is your base plate. Then you've got your two cutting plates. It also comes with, oh, I'm just trying to think, I think it comes, yes, it also comes with um, an adapter plate as well, um, which is for your embossing folders. Um, 
which is your number four. And I think there's a number three plate as well. Yeah, there we go. Comes with two other. These ones, number three and number four, are for your um, embossing folders, depending if you're using a 3D embossing folder or just a standard embossing folder. But it gives you all the instructions and tells you which ones to use um, on the actual plates. So that's super, super helpful. I use mine mostly for um, die cutting. So I just store these ones away in the packet. And you can buy the replacement cutting pads as well, or the cutting plates. I've purchased um, a packet of new cutting plates, but I haven't opened them yet. All right, so for these dies, we want our base plate number one. We want one of our clear plates number two. And then we're gonna use the other one for on top. Now we are going to cut quite a few things. So we need to make sure that our cardstock is only the width of the feeding mouth of this. And because it's a much narrower feeding mouth to our large machine, sometimes you have to cut your cardstock down a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually cheat. Oh, actually, I could do those both together. I'm gonna cut these down that way and then I'll cut this one across this way so that they're going to fit on there. In fact, if I cut that down a bit further, I might fit them on together. Let's see. Oh, it sounds like we're getting a storm brewing. <clears throat> Excuse me. This will be interesting. We don't know if our puppy is scared of storms. Oh, apparently she's not. That's right, the groomer said. Oh, uh, not the groomer, sorry, the breeder said she's not scared of storms. So, might be, we might, um, it today will be the test perhaps all right so we can cut both together so let's pop them both on there so i'm going to grab those dies which are now i've moved them here we go so we'll get out the dies so we want the two floral dies we're going to need some pots maybe too all depending on how we do them which i hadn't decided yet all right so that's the smaller one that'll be that one so that'll go that way and this one goes this way we use a little bit of washi tape just to hold these in place so this washi tape um stampin up doesn't carry washi tape at the moment they've had lots of washi tape over the years um, they currently don't have any, but I have a stack of retired washi tape and I've actually been collecting washi tape for many years, even before I was a demonstrator. So it comes in very handy because I used to do a lot of um, journaling and which I don't tend to do as much now because I don't have as much time, but I still have all my washi tape and I still do love washi tape, but mostly now it just gets used for purposes such as these. <laughs> All right, so just hold on to that top handle and wind those dies through. There we go. All right. And there we've got our beautiful two die cuts there. Now I might cut the other ones as well, just because I'm not quite sure yet how this is going to look. So we might need two lots of those. So pop that one on. And I think I had another pink one, didn't I? There we go. Yep, I'll just cut that one down. So it'll fit through our machine. Just cut that down. There we go. Put this one on here. Line that up. Okay. Right, we're going to get that in the right spot. There we go. I think that's right. Okay, and we'll pop that one through. Put our clear plate on top. Now, if you have trouble feeding these through your machine, just try staggering your plates a little bit so that they're not exactly lined up or butted up against um, the edge so that you don't have that square edge. Sometimes if they're completely lined up, um, so that the edges are very square. You'll see I've got mine a little bit staggered, but if you have them all lined up completely square, it can make it hard for the machine to um, grab a hold of them with the rollers. So just stagger your plates a little bit and it makes the machine, um, it's easier for the machine or the rollers to grab onto those plates and feed them through. 
just a little tip for you. Okay, so there we've got some more lovely flowers. All right, so we've got four there. We'll probably just use three, but we'll see. All right, I'll put my dies straight back on my die sheet so I don't lose them because, you know, I'm losing things today and I don't want to be losing my dies. I'm not sure where that one came from, actually. Where did that one fit? I'm not sure where that one fit now. I should have taken a photograph of it before I removed it, shouldn't I? That's what some people do. They take photographs of their dies before they remove them from their sheet so that they know where to put them back, which I think is a super great idea. Let's go this way. <laughs> I want to make sure that it sticks back on there properly so that I don't lose it. Okay. All right, so now we've cut those flowers out. We're also going to need a, we're going to need two shutters. So we're going to use this one here. This one has the two shutters in one die, which is awesome. And we're going to use a shadow box, uh, sorry, a planner box. So we're gonna do that in the same color as our window shutters. So they're gonna be in basic gray. Then we need one set of the hinges. We're going to do those in um, metallic silver. And we're going to need a window. So the window is going to be in white. All right, and I've got something else to show you with that one as well. Okay, so here's our machine again. Oops, bring that back in. Lots of die cutting today. All right, let's bring in our basic gray. Where is that? There we go. There's the piece I used earlier. Actually, I'll just cut that. Hopefully we've still got enough length on this one. Let's see, do we have? Oh yes, great. All right, so we'll go that way. Okay, I'm gonna flip my plate over because it's starting to bow a little bit. I've been cutting a lot on it, so I'm gonna just flip it over the other way. All right, so we're going to pop our window, um, oh, that's not the right one. It's this one, our window shutters on there and our planter box beside. So there we go, we can fit both of those on. Now let's move that up a little bit. You'll notice on these um, cutting plates, there's a line there. You don't ever want to put your cardstock or your dies beyond that line. Um, because and the same width at the other end as well because what will happen is it'll push your plates up at the end of the um, the sandwich and it actually makes it hard for the machine to grab them okay so don't push them all the way to the end all right and then we'll get a little bit of metallic silver for our hinges and I'll just snip that there there we go we'll pop that on as well We'll do that at the same time. Now, if you're putting anything through, you might hear the rain on my window, perhaps. Um, if you're putting anything through that has a straight edge, make sure you put it at a slight angle as well so that you don't end up with that speed bump. It makes it much easier for it to feed through your machine. Okay, there we go. And when we've got a solid piece like this, we just need to take it easy and just take our time to crank that through because it is, when you're cutting a solid piece like that, it's a little bit harder to feed it through. So there will be a little bit of resistance, but you don't, you definitely don't want to be forcing it through. Okay, there we go. So we'll pop these ones back on our die sheet. Oh, what stuck, stuck to my, to the cover. There we go, and our hinges as well. Right, so there's our beautiful silver hinges. There we go, and look at this. Ta-da! There's our little shutters, how cute are they? And they've got beautiful wood grain embossing on them from that die, and our little planter box as well also has the um, wood grain embossing on it too. So you could do these in all different colors. I was Googling different color schemes today, um, trying to decide which color scheme I was going to go with. And I saw a lot that were done in like neutral tones and browns and things like that. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to go with gray brick and um, deep gray shutters today, just for something a little bit different. Um, okay, now we also need a window. So we need some Whisper White for our window. 
that one going to be big enough? Oh, not quite. All right, that's okay. We have another piece that will work. So we're doing a whisper white window. And yes, that's the only other one we need. And we're going to use that, die, that die again in a moment. I'll show you what we're going to be using that for, but we're not going to be die cutting with it. There we go. Feed that through very carefully. Okay, so when you take this one off, you will notice that your window, it has embossed detail on it as well, and then you get these tiny little squares. Um, the top one isn't quite a square because the top of the window is curved, but you could, if you wanted to, you could use these little squares for another craft project perhaps. So if you like to save all your little bits and pieces, you might find another use for those. So don't necessarily throw those away. However, I'm gonna throw mine away because I have got heaps of scraps and I do not need any more. Okay, so we're, there's our window. While we've got the die out, what we're also going to need to do is to create a um, some wallpaper. So we're gonna use our die to create the wallpaper in the background. Now I'm using some of that designer series paper that we had before. Ah, uh, let me see. Oh. I've dumped everything on top of it. Hang on a moment. To find which one it is. Okay, so it was one of these ones here. Oh, I've still got some out actually. There it is. So it's the um, Flower and Field Designer Series paper. This is one of the celebration free um, products that you can choose. The Flower and Field Designer Series paper. So I'm just using a piece of this one, but I'm not using the floral side. I'm using the crushed curry polka dot side. So what I did is I used my die to create a template and I just traced around that with my pencil. Just trace around that die. Now, because the cur uh, this is the, the wallpaper in the distance, so we want that to be sitting behind the window but because we just traced the outside of the die we need to actually cut this on the inside of that pencil line and then you might need to even cut that down a little bit further because we want that to sit within the um the shape you know on the reverse side and we don't want to be able to see that from the front we don't want to be able to see the edges from the front if that makes sense so you'll see when I go to do it so I'm just cutting inside that line a little bit probably um, oh I don't know a couple of millimeters inside that line that I just traced there we go and so when I turn that over I want this piece to sit inside the edge of that window. Now that is just a bit too close for comfort at the top there. So I'm going to trim that down just a little bit more and just pop that down. I'm not sure if you can see that on such a, it's white on white. So we've see we've got, I've turned my, I've flipped my window upside down or well, well, over. So this is the back of the window and I want to adhere that there like that. Okay, so I know that that's going to fit within the white window and I will be attaching that with um, liquid glue so that I make sure that we don't see that sticking out the edge. Now before we do that we want to create some curtains. So let me show you how I created the little curtains. Um, I'll show you on my sample, well my half, my half created sample. I created the curtains, I've got a little ruffle across the top and I've got the curtains coming down the side. This bit is a little bit fiddly but what I used was the scallop lace trim ribbon. It's um, one centimeter wide and that's what I use. I just use little strips of that to create those curtains. So let me, actually I'm probably gonna need a color under it so you can see. Oh, you know what we're going to use? We are going to use our silicon craft sheet because silicon craft sheets are awesome. There we go, you'll be able to see that then. All right, so we need to adhere that afterwards but we're going to do our curtain. So for across the top of the curtain, we are going to use about three scallops. So I'll just cut that there. And then for down the sides, 
we are going to use about about the same no four scallops so four scallops for down the side three scallops for across the top and then we will trim them down as we go now I just used some glue dots to adhere that you can if you wanted to you could put a bit of stamp and seal um, however the stamp and seal is quite wide and the edges of this window are quite narrow so that is why I just use the glue dots and I simply folded them sort of in almost in thirds really to make them narrower narrow enough that they're not going to show from the front oh there we go so just roll them over with your take your pick tool there we go and adhere them down and I don't remember if I used two or three for that I did use three yes because we need it to sort of go into a curved shape because the top of the window is a curved shape um, Tina Marie says when you're making up your card tell everyone your mistake with the shutters so they don't make the same mistake oh yes so with the shutters when you're putting them down um, you have to make sure that you're putting them the right way round because there is a right way and a wrong way to put them um, so I will show you when I do it oops which is the right way round okay so we've got our three scallop so this bit's a little bit fiddly you don't have to add curtains if you don't want to you can um, just have the you could simply just have the um, wallpaper in the background if you wanted to but I really wanted to have cute little lacy curtains so I might just wiggle that across a little bit the good thing with the um, glue dots is you do have that because it's pliable you can sort of move it around a little bit you just have to make sure it then doesn't come out the edges so have a look at that from the front once you're happy with that then trim off any excess I've got a little bit of excess there so I'm just going to trim that away so that that sits within oops there's a little bit poking up the top there make sure you can't see any of that from out from the outside edge of the window frame oh I need my glasses on for this bit hang on a sec there we go there's just a tiny little bit on the edge there I might actually be able to move that down onto that glue there we go okay now with the sides again with our glue dots we're going to put a glue dot here so you just need to bear with me for this bit this bit is a little bit fiddly and a little bit time consuming however I wanted to show people what they could just do with these windows so they didn't need to be just plain boring windows you could actually do more with them so I've I had a look on um, Pinterest today to see what or how people had used these and there were quite a few beautiful cards on there but you know what there wasn't a whole heap yet so I think um, I don't know why but I think a lot of people are still getting around to using this one and I just thought I wanted to try something a little bit different some other people had had created curtains or like a, just a curtain ruffle along the top using designer series paper and one of our um, dies that we've got a couple of like scalloped edge dies and things like that that are in some of the um, die sets that we have and they used those they looked great as well but when I thought about it I remember that my mum always had lace curtains so I remembered the lace ribbon so that's why I wanted to use that just reminded me of the the old curtains in the old house so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this one I'm not going to overlap too much on that little bit of ribbon that I've already got because I don't want that to look too um, thick there so I'm just laying it down on the edge like that but I want it to look like the curtains are sort of drawn back a little bit so then when I get down to the bottom bit I'm going to take it at a bit of an angle so I just turned it over to have a look to see how that looked from the front so I might even move that up just a tad higher so I think it's not quite high enough you don't want it to look like it's a completely separate piece but you don't want too much overlap either so it's kind of a bit of a balance up you go up there up 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 I'm going to slide that up or oh, I might need to release that bottom bit it's pulling all of that with it there we go okay 
so that's looking better okay and then I want them to sort of you know curve off at the bottoms to looks like to make it look like the curtains are sort of drawn back a little bit so then all this extra here I'm going to trim that off but I'm going to do the other side first oh I've got all the glue dots sticking to me now I'm going to do the other side first before I trim them all down just so that I make sure that I get them looking roughly even and I've got I'm making sure that I've got the scalloped edge facing the inside part of the window there we go so we'll put that along the edge and then draped off at the bottom okay and then when you're happy with how that looks then you can trim off all that excess well there's not too much excess really but I might do that from the back there and we'll just trim that away being careful not to cut your window and not and being careful not to cut it too short too you do want it still within that window frame careful not to cut my window and then oops there's a bit still sitting out just make sure you don't leave any little bit sitting out the side of your window because when you adhere that down we want to be looking from the front as if you're looking in in through the window there we go oops tuck that in oops we've got a little bit still hanging out here let's see if I can move that across a little bit oh yeah there we go great oh nope still got a little bit hanging out there to trim off just a tiny little bit just there you might have found an easier way if you've done this before you might have found an easier way to do it if you have feel free to pop it in the comments so we love sharing our tips and tricks with each other we do that all the time in my team actually um, we jump we have a um Facebook group just for my team and we often jump on there and share our tips and tricks with each other it's fantastic we learn so much from each other it's really awesome there we go great so there's our little lace curtains in our window super cute all right and then we want to add our wallpaper now our wallpaper we want that to be you can either adhere that straight down because we've already got the glue dots there. Actually, you know what? That might be a great idea if we did glue dots again to give a little bit of dimension to lift it up off the, the wallpaper because obviously we're looking through the window to the wall in the distance. So we want that to be at a little bit of an, a distance. So you can either mount that up on mounting foam um, or which was my original idea actually I might go with my original idea mount that up on mounting foam or you could use glue dots as well but whatever you use on this layer you probably also need to use for the window shutters themselves so I'm gonna get my other snips because these are my tape ones and I'm going to trim down these little windows are quite narrow so you're going to need to trim down some little edge pieces of your dimensionals now I'm just wondering if these little bits that are in between those end pieces are actually the right width or oh, they are except for that extra little tip I've just got on there they will be the perfect width for the back of my window there we go beautiful so yes so use these little edge pieces from your dimensionals don't waste them use them along here I'm going to make sure I put plenty down because I want don't want that window to be saggy and then what you can do is you can just cut so we're not going to have enough probably so we'll cut down some of the other pieces of our dimensionals so we've got the right width and remember to support that middle panel of the window as well there we go so if you didn't want to fiddle with all of this, you could certainly just adhere, oops, you could just adhere um, using your multi-purpose liquid glue. That would be fine as well if you don't want the dimension or if you don't want to fiddle with all of the, the um, all these little extra fiddly bits. But I do like the fiddly bits in my projects, I have to say. Sometimes I try to keep it simple though because um 
you know, not not everybody is a um, experienced card maker, and sometimes it's good to show new crafters how they can still make beautiful cards doing simple designs. But then other times I like to do these more fiddly projects. I love to challenge myself. <laughs> there we go. Um, have I got another edge piece? No. Okay, I'll trim down some of these other pieces. I'll just make some little narrow pieces myself. Whoops. Is that one? Oh, that's not a good one. That's that's only a half a piece. Here's one. Here we go. I'll take that backing off there. Adhere that along here. And I think we need one more in there and then we'll do that center panel. The center panel is actually wider, so that'll be easier to, um, slightly easier to get some dimensionals onto there. Um, here we go. I'm trying not to adhere these straight over the top of where I've got the glue dots because otherwise it'll add like even more dimension and we don't want it to be too super high so there we go pop that one down there all right and then I'll I'll put a couple down that center piece there as well oh look there is one I missed that one before so let's pop one there and we need one more piece did I miss any of the others no I've got all of those okay let's trim another piece here you could also try the um, adhesive strips or the, the foam strips, I should say, the foam strips. They would be good as well. They are slightly higher than the Stampin' Dimensionals. The foam is um, a bit deeper. So just keep that in mind if you are doing that because then you need to um, keep that in mind for your window shutters as well because you want your window shutters at the same height. Okay, so I'm just hoping that this doesn't lift my curtains. I've got to do this really carefully so that it doesn't lift my curtains as I'm doing this because these are such tiny little pieces. There we go. I like to make things challenging for myself, don't I? <laughs> there we go. Amber actually said to me before I went live, she said, Mum, don't do the curtains. It's going to be too fiddly. Like, no, I want curtains. I need to have curtains on my cute little window. There we go. But she knew. She knew it was going to be fiddly. But it's okay. Fiddly's okay. Just take our time. If anyone needs to go, if you need to go and have dinner, that's okay. You can always come back and watch the replay later. All right, there we go. So now let's pop that down onto got to trim that little bit there it's just really annoying me okay hopefully I've got that ah oh no now it's stuck to me there we go all right so oh my goodness all this tape keeps sticking to me all right let's adhere that down now to our wallpaper and hold our breath because we don't want that sticking out the sides so we've got to line that up so if I get my head in shot I'm sorry but I need to make sure that I line this up really well there we go we did it yay so there's our little window how cute is that so super cute oh you're glad I did the curtains awesome Tina Marie thank you <laughs> So my tape just sits out from the edge there of some of that um, designer series paper because that was a very close call with the edges. But that's okay because we're going to adhere the rest of that down anyway. So that won't matter. And it has just caught on the edge. So that's all good. That'll hold it in place. I'm just giving it another final press to make sure that holds. There we go. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Let's get rid of all of those little scrappy bits all right now i'll just pop that down i'm going to leave that sitting on there just in case those little bits of dimensionals that didn't quite catch on um you don't want them sticking to anything till we get that onto the card okay there we go right now 
our flowers. We need to work out about our flowers. So we're going to have that there. Now with the shutters, you'll notice that, oh, let me bring this back in. With the shutters, you want them curving so that, okay, so say that your shutters are open, okay, like that. Then if you go to close the shutters over the window, they would fold in like that, so that when you close them, oh, got a bit of fluff on there. When, if you were to close those shutters, if they were a real window, you want the same curve as the window, okay? So when you open the shutters, they're going to open like that, okay? So you've got the shorter part, You've got the higher arched part at the outside and the lower part on the inside so that it matches with the side of your window. Okay, hopefully that makes sense for everybody. Great, good, good, good. All right, so I'm actually gonna have to lay that on here, aren't I? Because I'm going to have to work out what color we're going to do with the rest. All right, so these are gonna be mounted up on mounting foam as well. So I might put the dimensionals behind them now so we can see how they're gonna look with the dimension, but we won't adhere them yet because we've gotta work out all of our other bits. There we go, and let's do this one as well. One, using up all my edge pieces. Don't wanna waste them. Three, there we go. Okay, so that one there and that one there. And we're leaving room at the top for a sentiment. So they'll go there like that. Then we'll have our little hinges and then our planter box. Our planter box is going to be, I'm going to recess, I think, the planter box because the planter box is going to be, mm, I'm not sure yet. Let's just wait and see. Then we've got our plants. So we can either have the plants coming down off the planter box or we can put them in pots on the planter box. I haven't got any pots cut yet because these can actually hang down off that planter box like so. Because usually with a planter box, so it could be a ledge, like it could be like a little shelf or it could be a planter box that the the plants are actually planted into the planter box and that's what I was thinking. So that's why I didn't do any additional pots because I was thinking that these are actually planted actually straight into the planter box itself. So we might need to mount that up as well perhaps so that it's at the same distance as the window. So I might get some of my, oh yeah, I'll be able to use some of my edge pieces actually. Let's do that. Let's use some of those. using up all those little scraps today, which is fabulous. Don't want to waste those. There we go. Okay, then that will sit like so. Then we'll have our flowers, which will sit like so. I might bring that down just a tad lower. Oh look, everything's going to move. Don't let me forget that extra layer, everybody. Got to still add that extra layer, but I'm going to work out the flowers first. So we need to have that. I want to see some of the planter box. So I don't want to hide it all because it's really pretty. All that wood detail. And like so. Something kind of like that, kind of like that. And then we can have, okay. And we've got to put our hinges on there as well. And then we can have our sentiment. That's actually written up because I was going to put the sentiment at the top, but we could have the window up the top and we could have the sentiment at the bottom, couldn't we? Because the sentiment could be on the wall below so that would be all right too. So what if we move that up a little bit, perhaps? And then we've got to have another color underneath. So which color should we go for? Should we go for the gorgeous grape or should we go for the melon mambo as our extra layer? Oh my goodness, all of this just keeps moving on me. 
something like that. Okay, we'll adhere all, all of that down in a little bit. So we could either use the crushed curry underneath to match with the curtains, but that's kind of a bit boring, isn't it? Is that a bit boring? Mm, well, it's pretty bright and sunny, isn't it? And then we could try the gorgeous grape. Because don't forget, we're still adding a sentiment too, as well. So that's a nice pop of colour, isn't it? Oh, Kathleen thinks Melon Mambo. Okay, we'll try that one next. I love the, the gorgeous grape. That looks awesome. I think we'll go with one of the colours rather than the... Um, is that the right one? Yes, Melon Mambo. Um, rather than the crushed curry. I think we'll go with one of these colours. Melon Mambo. That's that one there. So what does everybody think? Do you like the gorgeous grape or do you like the melon mambo for the layer? Either one will go with the flowers. It's pretty much, it's just a preference really, isn't it? What do you think? Oh, you know what, I just had an idea. I'm gonna bring that yellow in. I'm gonna put a dot of yellow in between each of those flowers. What color did I use? That's, uh, actually, is that one? Let's have a look. Is that one actually crushed curry or is that, oh, it's bumblebee. I've been saying crushed curry all along. It's not, it's actually bumblebee. <gasps> well, my apologies. I'm gonna put a little bit, bit of bumblebee in each of those flowers to bring in that. While we're deciding on colors, let's put a little bit of bumblebee in each of these flowers just to bring that color in as well. We'll do that on each of these. That'll help to tie in that colour a little bit more. There we go. Beautiful. Um, grape. Oh, we've got lots for the purple. Okay, look, it's looking like the gorgeous grape is the winner. All right. Okay, yes, I like that one too. All right, so I'm going to cut this one at 14.2 centimetres by 9.8. So let me just move all of this out of the way. Oops, don't want to lose my little hinges. Got their little hinges. Turn them over to the silver side so I see them. All right. Okay, so we want 14.2, point two, 14.2, 1, 2, 14.2 by 9.8, 9.8. Eight. There we go. It was almost the right width. Not just a smidge off we needed. Just a smidge. Okay, so let's see now how that would look on that. That's actually a bigger border than I was expecting. Did I not cut the right size border? Oh no, that'll be alright. I'm going to bring in a nice amount of colour, I think. I'll move that over, move that over. What do you think? Is that a nice amount of colour? Yeah, yeah, I think that's good. Okay, beautiful. All right, so what we might do is we might adhere these two layers down first and then we can start building up our card and putting that all together. What do you think? Do you think that's a good amount of colour? Hmm, second guessing that now, is that too much? We'll go with that anyway. We don't have, we've already been going for a long time. So this is a really long Facebook Live today. All right, I'm gonna adhere these down. I'll adhere these two together first and then I'll put them onto my card front. Use some of my stamp and seal. Oh. So we've already got our brickwork done on here with those beautiful brick stamps, which are super easy to use and line up. They're really awesome. So we're going with a grey brick house today. Okay, line this up, hold my breath. Oh, it's a little bit off, that's not too bad. It's all right, don't look too close everyone, okay? <laughs> 
<laughs> if you happen to have jumped on a little bit late, feel free when I've finished to go back and watch the beginning because I introduced our new beautiful little puppy girl. Our little puppy's name is Callie and she's nine weeks old and she's absolutely gorgeous. And um, we fell in love with her as soon as we saw her photo and we knew that she was the one for us. And um, she joined our family just on Saturday. So she's still learning her way around the house. She's still got a couple of rooms to explore. We just didn't want to overwhelm her too much. All right, there we go. So we need to attach this one down now with the windows, making sure I put the windows in the right way. Don't want to do that wrong. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit of um, multi-purpose liquid glue on the back of this one. And I'm leaving my shutters in place so that I can see where I want to put that down. Oh, oh, I've got extra adhesive on the top of my glue. Let me just remove that with a tissue. There we go. We're sticking to my piece because I hadn't cleaned the tip of my glue. There's a little note to self. Be sure to clean the tip of your glue. There we go. All right. So that is going to go down about there. We want to make sure that's in the middle. Yeah, that's about the middle there. Okay. And just line those up just to make sure that that is in the middle and it's straight. Go over this way. We go over this way. It's a good thing about Tombow uh, multi-purpose liquid glue as well. You can wiggle things over a little bit. Beautiful. Great. All right. I'll give that a firm press in place now. Okay. Now with our shutters, I will. I should, probably should have put the hinges on be before I put the mounting foam on, but I forgot about the hinges, so that's okay. We'll add them afterwards. So we'll put our windows on. I mean, our shutters on. And remember that we want it as if the shutters were closing. They were going to be that way with the arch following the same as the um, window. And then we want that right up against the window. There we go. And the other side. Now, what I did notice is because I used glue dots and then mounting foam, I used glue dots for the curtains and then mounting foam, these shutters are just sitting slightly lower than the window frame itself because I had the um, dimension of the um, glue, uh, the glue dots as well as the mounting foam so they're just sitting a little bit lower but that's okay it's all good it's not real life is it people it's only a card well, I shouldn't say only a card it's a beautiful card but all good all right I am going to use my putty end I think of my take your pick tool to pick these up now, being sure that I adhere these the correct way. So they're going to go that way so that they hinge outwards like that. Oops. Okay. So I'll pick that up again with that and I'll just pop a little glue. So I don't want too much glue. We don't certainly don't want bubbles of glue. Just want some little dabs of glue. To hold that in place and just pop one down there lining that up with the edge of the um the edge of the shutter there there we go and we'll do the same with this one there we go if you hear the pitter patter of little feet that's our little one upstairs running around up there with the girls and pop that one down there. So I'm putting them so that they're um, in the middle of that top panel and that um, bottom panel, or roughly in the middle. They might not be exactly in the middle. And get them nice and straight. Oops, there we go, that's better. OK, 
Okay, do the other side. Oh, hey, Jenny, how are you going? Um, watching on replay. Oh, love my new puppy. Oh, thank you, Jenny. Yeah, I'm running a little bit late today, Jenny, too, because um, this card is a little bit more fiddly than I anticipated. And so it's just taking me a little bit of time. Whoops, but that's okay. If anyone's watching on the replay, feel free to fast forward any parts that you don't want to necessarily see. Fast forward to the parts that you do want to see. There we go. And one more. We are getting there. So we not haven't got too much more to do. We just put the planner box in place and then we're going to do our sentiment. So come on, glue. I'm not squeezing. I'm trying not to squeeze the glue too quickly so it doesn't ooze. But I'm being a little bit too careful. And then it didn't want to come out at all. There we go. Just making sure that my hinges are kind of even on both sides, both shutters. Lifting off that extra glue there. There we go. Okay, good. Great, we are getting there. All right, so now we've got to work out where we're going to put our little planter box because we need our flowers to sit up off that. Whoops, we're going to have our purple ones going this side, aren't we? That's right. Purple one's going that side. I'm just wondering if that is a good distance away from the window. Yeah, I think that'll be great. So we're just sitting at, it's about, oh, what is that? About half a centimetre gap there. Just so that we've got space to put the flowers as well because we don't want the flowers to cover up the window and all the beautiful curtains that we took all the time to create. So we will pop that down about there. So it's just sitting a little bit below the window. Okay. And then we can pop our flowers up. Now my flowers, I do want a bit of dimension on them. I would like them to sit up off the, um, the planner box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn them over so that I can sort of have them positioned where I think I'm going to want them. And then that way I can see where to put my dimensionals. I'm going to use minis this time. Let me just get them out of my container over there. Just so that we can strategically place them roughly where... Oh, actually, you know what? Because that's going to flip over the other way, isn't it? Yes, I'll have to do it this way. All right, so... All right, so I'm going to put one behind here. Got to work out where those dimensionals are going to sit so that they're going to adhere in the right spot. One there. So normally if I'm doing a sentiment, I'll flip it over to see where I'm going to adhere it. But because these are flowers and they've got all that, um, they're not sort of symmetrical, that's the word, symmetrical, then it makes it a little bit more challenging as to where you're going to put your dimensionals. There, I think that should be okay. And then we can always slip some more under there if we want to later. There we go. All right, so we'll pop that one down there. That one up there. There we go. And then with this one, we'll do the same. So we'll just sneak them under there. Being careful where these ones overlap as well, of course. We don't want to put dimensionals where they're going to be overlapping. There we go, we'll pop another one under here and up here. And that should probably be enough, I think. Let's see, we can always can always slide extra dimensionals under your, um, your pieces. Did you know that? There we go. Beautiful. There we go, that's a little bit bouncy just there. You could always slip an extra one. Let's just slip an extra one under there as well. Just under that edge there. there, and take the backing off that one. There we go. Beautiful. Good, good, good. Okay, so that is that. Now let's just add a sentiment. So we have got, let's have a look in our stamp set. 
we have got some beautiful sentiments in our stamp set. All right, let me just clean up some of this so that we've... If you wanted to, you could even add um, some pots down the bottom with some extra flowers in them or something, but I'm going to use that space to put my sentiment. And in fact, I should work out which sentiment I want to use because I've only got that narrow space there. So we kind of want either a long sentiment. I was actually also thinking of, where is it? Um, one of the Heal Your Hearts, Sorry for Your Loss. I was thinking of that one as well. Um, that would be really nice to put there as well. The thank you might be a little bit too big, but sorry for your loss would be lovely there too. Um, but there are some beautiful sentiments in here. And the Heal Your Hearts, that's one of the free um, celebration products as well. So you could certainly use one of those. Um, hope you have a wonderful Mother's Day. Wishing our prouds cross. You know what? I think I am going to use Sorry for Your Loss because I do have um, a friend who recently lost a loved one. So I think I'm going to use that one. Oh, very sticky on there. So this will be a lovely card for my friend. Let's see. That will fit beautifully across there and then I can just um, banner the ends with one of our um, picker punches or with the triple banner punch. So I think I'm going to stamp that on, let me see, I um, might just do that on white perhaps with the basic grey and then just banner the edges. You could, if you wanted to, you could... Um, stamp it onto basic grey or you could even stamp it onto the smoky slate and then um, emboss that in white but I, I know that I'm, I'm quite aware of the time we've I've been filming for quite some time so I think I'll just go with something that will be a bit quicker all right so let me find a strip that will fit this sentiment I think I've got one here that will fit yep beautiful this is one of the off cuts that I had. I will just put a piece of scrap down that I was using before. And I'm just using um, basic grey. And I'll just stamp it in a little bit so that I can trim those ends with one of the picker punches. Oh, I smudged that a little bit. Oh, let's get another one. Yep, that one will do. This one's a little bit wider. I rocked my stamp a little bit. Should never rock your stamps. Otherwise, you smudge your ink. Okay. Stamp that down. There we go. And I'll just bring in... Which one shall I do? Let's see. I might use the um, treasured tag punch and I think I'll use the curved one because that will kind of match with the curve of the shutters. But because I've, oh, it's not quite the exact size of the one that's uh, the shapes that are cut into this punch or the grooves that are cut into this punch, I'm just using my eye to um, cut that end there. So I'm not feeding it all the way in because I'm not sitting it within the groove properly. And we will just, I'm just taking that to the edge there. Hopefully that worked okay. Yeah, good. Yeah, because each of these punches has a different, um, has three different grooves in it. So in effect, you've got six punches there in one so they are um, half an inch three quarters of an inch and one inch but the width of this was kind of in between so I didn't feed it all the way in and I had to kind of line it up as well by eye rather than using those grooves to line it up yeah and then we can just pop that on there and then that's a nice it's also a nice subtle you could ink the edges if you wanted to um, but I think I'm just going to leave it as it is. And then it's a nice, subtle sentiment on the background there, um, on the um, brick wall, I should say. You could, I'm just thinking, 
No, I think I'm going to leave it subtle. I think I'm just going to leave it as it is. I was contemplating whether or not to ink it, but no, I think I'm just going to leave it to be a subtle sentiment. Use some more of these. Oops. Oh, well, I just dropped that one on, didn't I? Well, I guess that's staying there now. Okay. Let's put the other ones at an angle then too and make it look like we meant to. Because, <laughs> you know, we can always turn any little boo-boo into a positive, can't we? Now, you might notice I don't have any bling as such on this card. However, we have silver foil. And you could always add a little bit of bling to the flowers if you wanted to. Um, yeah. So we've got our ribbon. I like to have ribbon and bling on every card. We've got our ribbon. We just don't have the bling today, but I could always add a little bit of that later if I choose to. Oh, thanks, Tina Marie. Took a while to get it finished, but we got there in the end. There we go. And in fact, you know what? I am going to grab my bling because I'm going to put some bling on the sentiment there. All right, let me grab that. Here's my, one of my boxes of bling. I have multiple. This is just one. Um, let's see. Oh, I've got my silver. Use my silver. No, I think I'm going to go with plain rhinestones and I'm going to use the tiny ones because they will match in beautifully with the hinges, the silver metallic hinges. Okay, so let's see. We can put one on the end here and one on the end here. And that just gives our sentiment a little bit of something else, doesn't it? So that it's not just plain. There we go. And then if you wanted to, you could add some bling to the flowers as well. Um, I've already got quite a bit of dimension going on there. So I might just leave them like so and I'm just wondering do I add another one anywhere else or just leave I think I'll just leave the two actually today I don't, don't normally do odd numbers but we have got a lot going on in this card so there we go I think I will leave that there love it absolutely beautiful well worth the effort oh thank you so much Robin and Tina Marie says such a pretty card Mandy thank you there we go so we have that all finished and I've got the bits and pieces partly prepped ready for another one that I can make another one later on and then I'll have two and I might use a different sentiment on this one and I might even use the um the melon mambo for the background of that one when I put that one together but I'll pop that one aside I'll make that one another time um yeah so there we go so yes it was a little bit fiddly but as I said with that stamp set and dies you can do as much or as little as you like with it I did do the additional fiddling with the the window with the curtains and things like that you don't need to do that I just wanted to to add that extra um, there so I hope that you really liked that I hope it was worth sticking around for um, again if you're watching the replay feel free to um, fast forward or you've probably gotten to this point now you perhaps you already have fast forwarded through some bits uh, which is totally fine I get that it's a long line sometimes people like to watch it have it running in the background too when they're crafting themselves in um, their craft room I know I do that with videos as well so all right let me just flick the camera up so that I can say goodbye to you face to face and then I will let you go on your way um, for the rest of your day. All right, so two secs. I'll just cover up my camera while I flip that up and we'll get that ready. Okay. Flip those cameras back over. I forgot to do that last time, didn't I? There we go. And whoa, chopped my head off. <laughs> there we go. So I hope that you really liked that card. I'm still chopping my head off. There we go. Move that down and over. There we go. Okay. I think we're all good. Okay. <laughs> so there's my beautiful card. I hope that you all really liked that one. Now remember that these products 
Um, it's the window, it's from the, let me go back to just step you back a moment. So it's from the mini catalogue, the 2021 20, January to June mini catalogue. You'll find these products on page 58. It's the welcoming window bundle. You can get the stamp set and the dies together and save 10% when you purchase them as a bundle for $87.25. That's $87.25 in Australia. And again, remember that if you are purchasing before the 28th of June, um, if you throw in a packet of dimensionals or perhaps you would like some multi-purpose liquid glue that I was using today, bump that up over to $90 and then you can choose a free item from Celebration brochure that's only until the 28th of February and the sentiment that I used was one of the free stamp sets that you can choose um, when you purchase over $90 during Celebration and I used that sorry for your loss sentiment which is a really beautiful sentiment um, so yeah, so you could get that one for free or you could choose one of the other beautiful products that I showed you earlier. So I hope you really liked my card. Thank you for sticking with me. I know it took a while, um, but I think it turned out really pretty. I'm quite happy with it. So I hope you are too. All right. Um, thank you as well for all of your beautiful comments um, and all of your love and support um, in the loss of my father-in-law. Um, but yeah, we're all doing okay and um, especially having our new little puppy, it's really giving us a positive focus and um, of course it doesn't take away from loss but a lot of you who've been following me for a while know that we did lose our 14 and a half year old um, beautiful puppy in December. So this little one, although she's not replacing her, she's her little sister we're telling her all the time about her big sister. Um, but she is helping our hearts to heal. So thank you so much. Um, and I hope that you have a great week. I look forward to seeing you all again next Monday at four o'clock. Um, and again, thank you all so much for your support. Have a great week, everyone. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Happy crafting. Bye.